I'm Hans Kandel, Extension Agronomist with NDSU. Over the last couple of years we have done a large survey among growers to ask them about their production practices. This one was over a period of four years and it involved over a thousand producer fields. We analyzed the data and asked farmers, when did you plant? How much seed did you use? What variety did you use? What kind of yield did you get? And several other factors. The main points that we learned is that if you collectively looked at the planting date, planting date is very crucial in the yield potential of the crop. Just by planting one day later, when the season is ready, can give you a reduction in yield of about 0.3 bushels per acre based on this large data set. The second point that we found is the selection of the maturity of the varieties. The maturity is very critical. We need to get a variety that is as long as possible without hitting the frost date in the fall. But if we can go one tenth of a point in maturity higher, we will pick up about 0.7 bushels per acre based on this large survey. The third factor is seeding rate. Farmers are using various seeding rates and we looked at the seeding rate and if we are getting about 150,000 plants established in the farm, we will maximize yield. However, if you plant a little bit higher seeding rate, we do see a yield response. We ask ourselves, is this economic or not? And that is another question. We are looking now at the yield response to seeding rate. So based on some of those factors, we decided that we will test this one out in some of our small plot this particular trial that I'm standing in front of has been replicated in about seven locations throughout uh, parts of North Dakota and that was in 2019 and it is replicated again in 2020. In this particular trial we have three factors. We have planting date, the optimum date as soon as we can get into the field in the spring, two weeks later we have two row spacings, the narrow row spacing 12 inches and the white row spacing 24 inches and seeding rate. Then we selected two varieties that were about two or three points difference in maturity. So we have here what we call a factorial looking at the various factors that influence the productivity of this particular field. In the last year we found that if you planted the later maturing, yes we got a higher yield. If we planted with more seeds, we got more yields. We also know that the row spacing is important and typically we find that a narrow row spacing 12 inches will yield more than the 24 inch. However, our question is, is there a synergy between all those factors? So in the trial behind me, we have combined all those factors so that we can check out the various uh, factors that are involved. In this particular trial is the 24 inch row spacing with the late maturing variety and it has a bit of a, a yellow color and the next plot over we have a smaller row spacing, the 12 inch row spacing and as you can see the color is slightly more gray. We are looking here at the combination of the early maturity and the late maturing. This one is the early, mat uh, early maturing, but this one was planted late. The plots in front of us here are the early planted variety with 12 inch row spacing and it is the early maturing variety. On the other side we have the wider row spacing the same variety, also early planted. So the difference between the two is, if you look here into the row, you can see there is a wide area between the two rows. We are talking about solar radiation as the driving force for yield. So during the earlier part of the season, I used an app called Canopio, and I took a picture above the canopy when it was green and we calculated the green area of this plot versus the green area of the narrow row spacing. And every time we do this we come to the conclusion that the narrow row spacing covers the ground more quickly 
and more solar radiation is intercepted early in the season. And as the solar radiation is driving the yield, we typically get higher yields with the narrow row spacing compared to the wide row spacing. So based on the research that we have been conducting in 2019, we found that there is indeed a synergy. The best combination is planting early, as soon as you can in the spring, planting a later maturing variety and planting narrow row spacing and with a high seeding rate. This one was planted with 185,000 seeds. It was planted as soon as we could in the spring, about 15th of May. And this is an early maturing variety or late maturing, an 0.8 maturing variety. And as you see, it is the narrow row spacing with 12 inches. So out of the trial that we conducted, we did find that if you can combine those factors and put them all together, we are out yielding and are able to obtain the best results for our farm. So early planting, the best maturity for your region, a good seeding rate, get at least 150,000 plants per acre, and plant narrower than the 30 inch, preferably in that range of 14, 12 to 14 inch. That one will be the combination where you obtain the highest yield. Now I would like to talk about uh, some of the results over a couple of years and a few comments about uh, variety selection. So uh, the trial that I uh, have been discussing in the previous video uh, is a large scale uh, trial with uh, several uh, things to consider. So in this last year, in September of uh, 2020, we had a frost event quite uh, throughout the state and uh, that took care of uh, some of the growth of the later maturing varieties as can be seen uh, in this picture. On the left uh, we see uh, a picture of the trial plots with the early and late maturing and it is quite obvious that the late maturing varieties weren't ready yet. And in the center, you can see of the, some of the leaves that are uh, uh, frost affected, and also this will cost us some yields. So a couple of things that I would like to discuss here is uh, the yields of the various factors. Uh, as I mentioned, the row spacing is very critical. And if we can plant at a narrow row spacing, for instance, uh, 12 inch compared to 24 inch, we can see that there is a significant yield difference between the two. And this is uh, what we have found over many years. And it had to do what I was talking about with the solar radiation uh, interception with the narrow rows. More of the sunlight is being intercepted. So. Here is the list of the trials that I, uh, the trials that I've been doing. So basically, have an early maturing in 05, first in a late matur maturing in 08. Then I have uh, now all the 12 inch data combined. So I'm going to focus on the best potential combination. So early planting meant as early as we could get in, and late planting meant that we went in two weeks later. The seeding rate was 165,000 and 185,000 seeds, live seeds per acre, but I was aiming at approximately 150,000 established plants early in the season. So I'm just going to look here at the 2020 data, as I've already shown you some of the data from 2019, and then I'm going to combine over 18 environments. So in this particular uh, bar on the bottom, you see I have um, several locations where I did this trial. On the left, you can see the bushels in uh, the yield in bushels per acre. Then the red bar is early planting results and the green bar is late planting results. So if we just look at the first environment, you can see above the red bar is an A compared with the green bars with a B. That means that I'm 95% sure that this is truly a difference based on early planting. And as you can see, we have here a number of bushels difference. So in each environment, except for the, this environment where I could not determine the significant difference, all the environments at the red bar, the early planting is higher. And the average over the nine environments was the red bar was higher. So now if I combine over 18 environments over two years, we can see here the early planting 
is indicated in red and the green in is the late planting. So the 2020 data that I just have been uh, sharing with you. And then we combine the two years and over the two years, you can see that the red bar, which is early planting, had significantly more yield. And that was about a 7% higher yield. So this is about two weeks. So which is about uh, 14 days, which means that about a half a percent of yield is lost for each day that we planted later than the optimum or the first potential day that we could plant. Now, when I say first potential date, I'm talking about when the soil temperature is at the right uh, 50 degrees roughly, and we have uh, not in the forecast any severe weather conditions nor any frost. Now, the second uh, factor is the maturity. So we know that if we can grow a crop longer in the season, we have more solar radiation interception and can then benefit for it. However, we need to know that certain years that doesn't always uh, work out. So here I'm showing on the left the bushels per acre. The red bar is the early maturing and the green bar is the late maturing. So in 2019, yes, the late maturing had definitely a benefit. In 2020, there was really no benefit at all. And that had to do with the frost. So when we select a variety for our region, we need to consider what actually maturity of that variety is. So combining the data sets over the two years and 18 environments, we come to the conclusion that yes, on average, long term, picking a later maturing, two tenths of a point or three tenths of a point more will give us a yield advantage. Here we see the six percent yield increase. So with an, about an 0.2 difference in maturing, that means every 0.1 immaturity gave us about a 2% increase. Sorry, this was a three unit difference between the 05 and the 08. So there's about a half a percent increase per uh, maturity point. Now, the seeding rate is uh, important. We have to realize that when we seed, we're not always getting all the plants established. So we typically seed more than that the plants that are actually counted in the field are. So in this case, we have uh, really two seeding rates, 165,000 versus 185,000. And in uh, 2019, there was a slight benefit of the higher population. If we compared in 2020, 20, a very minute difference. Overall, over the two years, there's only a 1% increase. So in other words, the 150,000 uh, plants established, if we look at 165,000 seeded, is probably in the ballpark of what we want to achieve. So now the interesting thing is when we put all those factors together, I talked about an interaction. We know that the individual parts are benefiting, but what happens if you combine them? So in this graph, we have on the bottom the combination of the various uh, factors. And then again, on the left, you see the bushels per acre. Now, if you look at this graph, all the red bars are significantly higher yielding than the green ones. And if you look what they are, is that the early planted, early planted, early planted, and early planted. So the most dominant factor was the early planting. And then if we look here at the uh, what is uh, happening here is the seeding rate. So for the early planted with the latest maturing with the highest seeding rate, now we do see a slight yield advantage. So when I say on average, there was no uh, yield advantage with seeding rate, it will have an advantage where you can plant early because early planting with a few more seeds will get that plant established a bit quicker and quicker canopy closure and a longer season. And that is where the yield uh, potential comes from. So then if you uh, look here at uh, the right bars, this is the later maturing three points difference. And although not significantly different, I could not determine that they were different, but definitely lower yielding. So basically what I'm telling you, early planting, highest maturity possible, narrowest row possible, and if you can 
plant a few more seeds early in the season, you benefit. Later in the season, that benefit is not as much uh, available. So the next uh, section I would like to briefly talk about uh, is uh, about uh, variety trials. Uh, it is uh, critical that we select uh, the best varieties. So in North Dakota, every year, we uh, publish the variety trial booklet. This one uh, is the hard copy, but because of uh, COVID, you may not be able to obtain a hard copy. So where can we find a copy of the variety trials that is at the website? Your easiest to Google is NDSU variety trials. It gives you a layout of various crop. You click on the soybeans and you will get to this uh, uh, site where you can download the complete booklet for North Dakota or for the individual sites. If you're interested in a site closer to you, you can do this. So in the picture here, you will see an example of the variety trial in Carrington. Um, the, each of uh, the plots has one variety growing in it and it is replicated. So the same varieties appear three or four times. And in this particular trial, you can see some of the brown already mature and the green not mature. And typically what we do, we give the date when it is physiologically mature. That means that 95% of the pods have the mature color. That means that everything that can go into the pods has gone into the pods. And that date is recorded as a calendar date for that specific trial. So now you can compare when a variety was mature in that trial. And as we know that on average, we can expect a frost day to be around that third or fourth week of September. Last year, 2020 season was early frost. So we need to be pushing the maturity, but don't take too much risk that you get a variety that is always late maturing. So a couple of things about uh, varieties that are available for uh, you know, production are also what we call the conventional varieties, the public available. These are bred by NDSU. And uh, oftentimes these varieties are available uh, at uh, our local seed growers, the farmers that uh, are in the seed production unit uh, uh, business. And a couple of things to highlight here. So first of all, we, uh, we do have here the varieties on the left uh, indicated and the issue varieties typically now have an ND in front of it. And then the second one is the maturity group. So for central North Dakota, we are looking somewhere of a double zero or an early zero group. So uh, for this pro soil or statement might not be uh, a good choice for central and northern uh, North Dakota. Uh, the next column is uh, sometimes important for the buyer. It is talking about the hilum color. Now hilum uh, color can be important if uh, a crop is sold into the consumption market. So the first two on this list are GT, which is glyphosate tolerant varieties. The rest are varieties that are conventional and could be used for uh, the human consumption. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because our seed cost for these varieties is a lot lower. However, we need to use conventional for uh, chemistry for uh, the named ND roulette, et cetera, varieties. GT means that it is glyphosate tolerant. So going back to the hilum color, here's a good indication of A, which is white, bluff, uh, white or yellow. The B is buff, the C is brown, D is imperfect black, and then we do have one here, we'll remove my face here a little bit down, is black. So certain companies do not like to uh, buy black hilum if it is for human consumption. So always check with the buyer what uh, the buyer wants. So going back to the variety selection, one of the things that is important is also to select one that has a tolerance to Phytophthora. So here is an example in this graph of a resistant variety against Phytophthora, North Dakota Benson. And here is a susceptible variety against phrase four, Phytophthora. So this variety has some tolerance. 
So always check if you have a Phytophthora issue, if a variety has some genetic uh, resistance against the problem that you are facing. In this case, we're looking at Phytophthora. The other thing to consider is iron chlorosis. And we can also look at uh, varieties for cyst nematode uh, resistance. So last couple of slides are talking here about the ND1800 HGT, which is a 008, and we have the 009. Those are glyphosate tolerant varieties, so we can use those uh, herbicides on it. Now, the difference is because there is a special gene included in the 008, a farmer cannot save their own, save their own seed. However, with the uh, 009, farmers can keep their own seed. You cannot sell that seed that you keep from your product, but you can use it for your own use. So there would be an advantage to reduce your seed cost. Uh, it is one of the opportunities to kind of manage uh, some of the risk in, uh, in our production system. Mm -hmm.